Hey guys, what's up? It's Jordan from Fighting for My Voice, My Life with Verbal Apraxia. And in today's video, this video is all going to be about educating law enforcement about what is verbal apraxia. What is speech disorders? What is the speech impairment? So many different questions. And in today's video as well, we are going to be talking to you guys like we would anybody else because you're just like everybody else. So hi, welcome. And also I could make this video like super serious and I could be talking in a serious tone and just be like verbal apraxia, blah, 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 blah. But I'm 22 years old people. I like to have fun. I like to be on here and be like, hi, welcome. So that's what today's video is going to be. Before we get into the video, if you want any more information about verbal apraxia beyond this video, beyond this realm of my world, you can check out my social media links down below and you can get more information as well. So, people, what is verbal apraxia? The underlying question and the first question that I want to get out of the way. Verbal apraxia is a speech disorder where your brain has trouble sending your mouth signals for accurate movement of speech, aka talking in simpler terms, really. Um, and it's when you do try to get your words out, the word can sound like a word that you weren't intending on saying, or it can sound slurred. Um, people can say that people who have verbal apraxia can oftentimes sound robotic also. Um, and just some more things about verbal apraxia too. If a person with verbal apraxia is under stress, or in an anxious situation, their talking can bring out their speech disorder, which means that they have a higher increase in having speech difficulties. And also, I wanted to get to the next question, what is a speech disorder? A speech disorder is where a person has trouble articulating and forming sounds for proper speech. And this can look like stuff beyond the world of verbal apraxia. So this can also be present in phonological speech disorders as well. So the next question that that is probably on your mind, why is the, this kid talking to his phone explaining this to me? Why? Well, good question, people. <laughs> It is why I am um, making this video is because people with speech disorders um, are often mistreated by law enforcement. And this is unfortunately true and frankly, it sucks. And that's why I wanted to make this video. And I also wanted to talk about some misconceptions and misassumptions people can have about people with speech disorders, not only law enforcement, but but also other people as well in the person's day-to-day -day life. People can often um, be under the assumption that the person is either drunk or high, aka under the influence. And parents, if your kids just heard that, cover their ears that's a late warning, I'm sorry, but I don't know, it's true, and it's something that unfortunately happens, and this can also be seen, particularly with law enforcement, is when a driver is being pulled over, and um, a person with a speech disorder is in the car, that is an anxious situation. That's like, oh no, I'm getting pulled over. I might have to pay money. Nobody likes paying money, people. But um, these people have the higher increase in having speech difficulties because they're under stress. And they're going to most likely have some speech 
difficulties also, even if they weren't talking with a police officer. So this is so like this isn't very specific to this situation, but is but it also happens in the person's day to day life when they get stressed or when they get anxious and just in their everyday to day life, even if they're not stressed or anxious. I just wanted to clarify that as well. So since we are learning new things, people, what can we do to better improve outcomes? These are things that I would really like you guys to think about. How can we better outcomes? And I've also thought about this as well, because, hey, I'm a person who is living with verbal apraxia. I am a person that has faced discrimination from police officers uh, for being mistaken under the influence of being drunk or high. Um, and this was something that wasn't fun for me. And I also don't want this to happen to other people, which is why I'm making this video. So some of the ideas that I have gotten off the top of my head for people who do have speech disorders is for people with speech disorders who have a card in their wallet that explains their speech disorder or just names their speech disorder, their name, their age, their gender pro pronouns, and also just where they live. Um, and then some more ideas that I've actually gotten and I've actually heard with people with verbal apraxia too, this woman named Molly, um, who has verbal apraxia, and she's also working with me on this project also. Um, she keeps a folder in her car that has her contact information and explains verbal apraxia as well. And I think this is a great idea for people who have speech disorder, speech impairment, and also really any type of different neurodiverse background as well, um, just so that the police officer can be more prepared also. Um, and that's not saying that um, they should have to prep themselves, but police officers, as I know you guys do, um, kind of work at a more fast pace and you have to be quick with your judgment calls, um, but this will also help. And while we are talking about this conversation as well, I really want you guys at your stations and stuff to think a, about how can we better accommodate people with speech disorders, speech impairments, and different neuro, neuro backgrounds as well, because this is something that we really, really need to work on and that we do not need to ignore. And also, fun fact about verbal apraxia, because many of you guys probably never heard a thing about it in your life, and you're just like, this fancy term with these fancy words, what is this? Um, and really, verbal, a, verbal apraxia wasn't discovered until the late 80s, people. The late 80s. If I was having verbal apraxia in like the 1940s and the 1950s, I wouldn't have known what I had. And that is scary. I mean, honestly, that is something that shook me. And I was like, wow, like I wouldn't have even known. So we have a, a long ways to go. We have a long ways to spread this message out and to spread the awareness of verbal apraxia. We have a long ways to go, but we can get there and we can get there also from, from your guys' help. We need your help. That's why I'm filming. That's why I'm talking to my camera. If you guys have any more questions about verbal apraxia, please don't be hesitant to reach out to any of my, my social media down below. I am happy to get back with you and I will talk to you guys later. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I also help, hope it was helpful as well.
All right. Bye.